Ryan here with Prudential Pest Solutions. We had a client in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, which is in southeastern Pennsylvania in Chester County. And they have an art studio that they uh, made out of their garage area. And they had a ton of yellow jackets alive and dead in there. And so they had called us and they said, hey, we have a lot of yellow jackets. They came through what we think is a hole in the ceiling. And they're flying all around our studio. And um, if we look down, we can see some dead ones all over the floor on the windowsill. So definitely indication of a nest in the in the ceiling. And on the outside wall there, we could see yellow jackets coming and going. So I'm all suited up in my bee suit. And I got my telescoping ladder. We're going to throw a tarp down and get this nest treated and removed. I really like this telescoping ladder. It's it's so compact, it's sturdy, it's strong. Um, and it just allows me to work safer in, in areas like this. I mean, I really like it to get into attics and whatnot too. So we're just gonna move some of the nice art material out of the way. And all those specks on the ground are all dead yellow jackets. And all the live ones are flying around and kind of gathering at the windows and the lights and whatnot. So for this treatment, we should really just need my PTPI, which is my fast acting aerosol that doesn't leave a residual, a drywall saw, some tape, and then a longer term residual dust that I use to to apply into the void. So we can see the hole there. So their nest is directly on top of that. And what happens is they, when they build their nest like that, they chew at the drywall until eventually it gets really soft and, and they kind of just break through it. And the yellow jackets that we find dead and alive in the, in the space, in the livable space of the studio, um, I think that they kind of accidentally make their way out. They can't figure out how to get back into their nest. And that's why they congregated the windows, the lights, and the doors, because they're just trying to figure a way back out. So I'm just injecting the PTPI into the nest. And as soon as you do that, you just hear that whole ceiling just buzz, and, and it comes very loud. And that's how you know you're getting to the bulk of the nest. And then once that noise subsides a little bit, usually within you know a minute, then we uh, we can start opening it up. And the reason we don't want to open it up right away is I don't want just a, a lot of yellow jackets flying alive into the into the studio here. I want to be as many as dead as possible. That way they fall in the tarp and it'll be less for us to clean up then. Because when we leave, the client, all they have to do is just get the drywall repaired. There's no cleanup, no live or dead yellow jackets left in the space. So when I cut into the nest here, or the uh, this drywall, I should say, I'm just basically removing the damaged section of drywall, the section that's that's very flimsy, moist, and uh, and chewed out. And we can see there's the nest. But we don't need to create a big opening to get to the nest. We're just going to remove the damaged section of drywall. And that way, when it comes time to be repaired by a drywall specialist, they don't have to do a huge area. They can just do a little patch job here. So now that more areas are exposed, we're going to keep treating that void. And then here's a, a picture of what the nest looks like. And a close up view of it. So this nest was stacked up and down and then all the way to the edge of the, of the wall there. So when we go to remove it, you know, obviously we'll remove the big sections that are exposed, but then I usually just stick my arms through there and, and sweep around and just make sure we have every bit of the nest out. Cause it's important if we already opened it up to remove every section of it. And I'm trying to remove it in as big chunks as possible because uh, it cuts down on the amount of larvae that drop down and the larva is just gooey and wet and it, again it just makes cleanup a mess and uh, you know we don't want to damage anything they have in there in the studio itself you 
Now, this particular artist, uh, I got the sense, was more into the textile art, which is why those nails are there. Um, that's what they would use to hang hang product or hang material as, they, uh, as they're working on it. And there's some of the paper nest itself. A little bit of insulation comes out with it. And again, we're just making sure we have every bit of that out of there. You can see we removed a fair amount. Now I'm grabbing our long-term residual dust. And we got our tape. So this dust lasts a lot longer than that aerosol does. I mean, the aerosol doesn't have any residual to it. It's just, I just use that to, to do a quick kill. This dust is what's longer-term protection. So even the yellow jackets that are on the outside flying around, if they make it into this space, uh, it's going to kill them off. And then to prevent any new yellow jackets from coming in, we're just going to tape that opening up. Because like I said, when we leave, I'll have everything vacuumed, swept, and clean so that you know the homeowner doesn't have any work to do. So this treatment took place at the end of August and, um, you know, basically August, September and October even are the, are the prime months where yellow jackets in Southeastern Pennsylvania start to reach their max population levels or population numbers. So that's usually when, you know, the nest gets so large, there's so many workers and, uh, the nest is expanding and that's why folks tend to notice them, even though this nest has been in the growing process or, or it started in the spring it's been in the growing process ever since but you may not notice one or two or a handful of yellow jackets coming out whereas this time of year in late summer early fall i mean there's hundreds of them coming and going out of there and it's impossible to miss so these clients like i said they noticed the issue because their art studio was flooded with yellow jackets but on the outside of this there were yellow jackets hundreds of them coming and going all the time so it's pretty tough to miss So now we got everything taped up, looking pretty. And you can see we had a fair amount of cleanup to do. You know, we're gonna get all those dead yellow jackets out of there. But at least we know no new ones are coming in and the nest has been successfully eradicated, treated and removed. So I'm just going to position a little bit that we can get some pictures to send to the client because we always like to give our clients some pictures of what the nest looked like, what their house was growing. And there's a close up of it. So pretty good size. All the white there is all the brood, all the new yellow jackets that were yet to be uh, hatched, which is why this nest would have continued growing for the next month or so uh, until we hit the cold weather. So since we got all the, the nest, the bulk of the nest onto the tarp, we'll just take that outside. And then I use a battery powered vacuum to come in and remove all the yellow jackets and all the nesting debris that was in there. And the battery vacuum is just, it's so nice. I just put it right on my back. I just walk around and clean everything up. So I don't need to find outlets. I don't need to find anything else other than just get everything cleaned up. So another successful yellow jacket treatment and removal. We are the Yellow Jacket Hornet, Bee, and Wasp experts. This one was in Kennett Square, PA, which is in Chester County, but we service Chester County, Berks, 
Delaware County, all of southeastern and south central Pennsylvania. So if you have a yellow jacket issue, it's time to call the experts at Prudential Pest Solutions, 484-401-4361.